Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys about what options you have for cutting these railroad ties down. So you have to cut it when you come to make corners like so. Same thing for outside corners. Cutting the outside, also the inside so it lines up. Cutting them shorter if you need. So what options do we have? So these are the old railroad ties that you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot like $29 a piece and they used to be used on the railroads I don't know decades ago and you can consider it like reclaimed lumber where they're still making some money off of old products and so they don't cut easy even though they're really really old they've got they're well preserved where if you look even cutting in here you can see how fresh the wood is if there wasn't dirt and some of that tar it would uh, look even better. So they might look pretty aged on the outside, but they're very solid on the inside. So what options do we have? You have a chainsaw, the more expensive option, and these will cut these like butter. However, inside of the cracks are little bitty rocks and also some large rocks. Random nails, railroad, tie, railroad uh, spikes, the most random things are inside of these. So what you'll find is, as you're cutting with your nice chainsaw, you'll hit one of those rocks and it'll instantly dull the chain on your chainsaw. And so you won't be able to use it anymore unless you sharpen it, or if you have a spare chain, you can swap in real quick. So this option is great. However, I'm gonna give it a fill for railroad ties um, because of just all the foreign material that's stuffed in here over the years. So if these were new cut lumber, I'd say definitely go with this. It'll cut it like butter. So option B is a reciprocating saw. So I have here a DeWalt XR with a five amp, batter, five, five amp hour battery on it. And then I'm using Milwaukee demo blades so they can cut through wood that has nails embedded in them. So this is um, a fresh blade with only cutting one railroad tie and you can see the amount of heat that's generated while cutting through these. I'm telling you these things are they're tough to cut through. It'll use this is a pretty new battery it'll use at least half of it just doing one cut. So I have four or five of these and another downside is this the saw will get so hot even with gloves on it'll burn your hands. Um, so really I should be practicing more of a, a work rest cycle with the saw. So you'd be looking at two to five minutes per cut. Um, I'm telling you, these things are thick. Uh, the advantage though is these blades are pretty cheap. You know, a few dollars a blade. The saw should be able to take it. You know, the motor's got a fan. And then you're going to have to have plenty of batteries. So if you're wanting to do this with um, a saw you've only got one battery and perhaps it's from harbor freight um you could be doing you could be spending all day on it so that's my recommendation is the reciprocating saw we will be able to cut through um nails and potentially even spikes that are in there um if they if you hit rock you'll be able to listen to it and get it out of there uh, the chainsaw like I said is great but it just takes too long if you wanted me to talk more about this project that we just finished it's actually not finished it's halfway done we still have to do decorations it's supposed to be like some kind of rock garden um, let me know and I'll make a video about it this is about 4,200 pounds so 2.1 tons of river rock that I bought here locally in Oklahoma. So I can talk more about the cost for really the project as a whole, let me know. And I'll give you some tips for transporting this rock for it's, um, this stuff is pretty painful until you figure out a good system. So let me know and I'll make a video about it.